All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Brandy Bernowski, who is in New Jersey. How are you doing, Brandy? I'm great. How are you today, John? I am excellent. And this is a first. I have never had a, an alchemist on the show before. So this is a, this is a nice start to the day. So uh, Brandy is the chief alchemist and owner uh, of her of her company and just tell me why at why chief alchemist it's alchemy plus aim yes so you know it was interesting because i originally started the business under my name mm -hmm. and when i started to step into a leadership role with my team um i i just didn't want to have the same kind of old-fashioned structures of like owner or ceo like yes mm -hmm. th those things technically do apply to me but I also wanted to create a real spirit of collaboration. And as I was working with clients and digging deeper with them, um, I just started to feel like there was this transformation that happens when you work on a website, um, kind of like a deepening, of, a deepening understanding of yourself, of your business. So I kind of feel like I facilitate those, those uh, kind of transformations in our clients, but also in our team. It's really important to me that um, everyone on my team is growing, that we're expanding both personally and professionally. Oh, excellent, I, I love it. And what we're gonna talk about today is, we're gonna talk about websites that actually convert. And and let's say, um, you know, Brandy, I mean, there's been so many, so many, there's been so many developments and so many technological advances that in some ways, people think of websites as kind of old hat, right? Uh, yes. So how do you, so how, when you talk to people, um, how do you, how do you get them to refocus and understand that, you know, websites are still this um, living, breathing, dynamic thing that's critical to businesses? Yeah. So I think it starts by understanding that um, with all of the really fantastic social media out there that, mm -hmm. that's happening today, you know, it, it you really depend upon the social media algorithms to put you in front of people. So a website's always going to be in front of people. It's always something that you can drive people to. And I like to, I like to think of it as more than a brochure. I think that was um, kind of the way that websites were previously approached in years mm -hmm. past. Like it's your brochure. It's like your business card online, but what it really is, it's kind of like the next level of experience. So someone experiences, you know, Instagram posts from you and they want to know more. You're mm -hmm. probably not going to have the full breadth of what you do on Instagram. I mean, um, they'd have to dig, you know, through mm -hmm. a lot of posts to actually get that full understanding. So it's really great to have the website to take people to, so you can kind of continue that experience with them and you can deepen the relationship. You can invite them to be on your email list. And you can potentially, you know, build that relationship even deeper by, you know, converting them to become your client or customer as part of that. Yeah, and and I think part of the other thing, part of the issue maybe is that um, people don't generally have a good strategy for their website. No. It kind of tends to be something that's an afterthought, or they just, or they build it organically. You know, it's like start, it's like you know, go out and build a house but have no plan for it, and just kind of build a bit as you go, and add a bit here and add a bit there, and you know, then you end up with a monstrosity. Yeah, that I, I see that very often, and I see a lot of kind of like missed opportunities on websites mm -hmm. too. I, I mean, I, I will totally admit when I built my first website, it was like, hi, my name is Brandy and I'm a website developer and this is what I do. Um, and I have learned from my clients and from trainings I've gone through like that, that's nice. And you're going to do that at some point, but what it's really important to take the time to do is anchor your incoming clients, visitors to potential visions of their future success. Mm -hmm. That draws them in. And a lot of people don't do that. They don't know to do that. Um, and as a result, they, that the website does kind of start to feel haphazard and, and they, they feel like they have to work at converting people and selling them and, and really like showcasing how awesome they are. They are inevitably awesome. Like we work right. with really fantastic, awesome people. But what's awesome about anyone's business is the success you kind of facilitate in your customers and clients. That's really like, that's why I do what I do. It's, you know, there's success for me personally, yes, but I just get so much out of seeing my clients succeed. And I know other people do as well. So what, so when you sit down to do a strategic planning session with a, with a client for their website, what are some of the elements that go into that? So understanding who they really serve. 
And mm -hmm. sometimes it's been a while since they've actually looked at that. So they may still be serving a picture of someone that they created like three or four years ago, which mm -hmm. may not be as applicable anymore. Yeah. Um, I also think it's really important to understand where people's values are at a given point in time. So like pre-quarantine, we were thinking differently about making purchases. Now that we're, I guess, I, I, I wouldn't call this a post-quarantine world yet as we're recording this, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, now that we've gone through a bit of quarantine, our values have changed. Like we're thinking differently about how we're investing our money. And so I think it's important to be aware of where your ideal clients, how they're thinking, like how are their visions of success changing for themselves based upon the, the world that they live in today? So I always kind of really like to start with that foundation and then build on from there. Like what is the you know, most enticing free offer that we can give them to, to mm -hmm. enter into a relationship with them? What's the direct call to action that really stirs their heart and like makes them say, yes, I need to know more. So it's kind of like constantly just being aware of where people are and understanding where they were a year ago is not the same as where they are today. And shifting language or shifting calls to actions really based upon how people are right now. Yeah, and, and I think that's a really good point because, I mean, as, as we know, uh, buyer behavior has continued, it continues to evolve and change and, and much faster now than it used to. And then we layer in on top of it, as you say, the, the pandemic uh, that we're in now. So there's accelerated even more change. But as you say, sometimes it's, you know, companies, they do sort of do their ideal target buyer and think, God, oh, thank God, done that, done that project. Yeah. And then sort of then move on from there. And, and it is, I mean, I guess part of what you have to persuade them to do is to be constantly evaluating who their target buyer is on an ongoing basis rather than just a one-off. Yeah, I think it's one of the things I really work with my clients on is understanding that um, the finished pro product of a website is actually never really finished. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you have to be iterating on it. You have to be evolving it. Like, and the same is true of your business. If you think that you've constructed your business and you can walk away and not think about it mm -hmm. anymore, that's, that's an unfortunate lie that you're telling yourself. Like it is an evolution and you have to kind of like be engaged with it. It is, it's growing, it's evolving. And um, the way, it's the same with the website. Like I just try to get people to understand that is even after it's done, it's going to need you know, growth, you know, like there may need to be a new page. Language may need to change based upon what we see the behavior on the website's going to be. So you have to stay engaged with it and just have to kind of be aware of what are you paying attention to? What are you looking for? What feedback are you getting from people so that you can just keep refining? And then how do you get, how do you get um, everybody in the company to realize that the website belongs to everybody and not just like well that's just the marketing people or the marketing person they look after the website you know that's all their deal but realizing that it is your window you know it is your shop window in many ways and it is it does represent you so it's important that everybody understands the strategy of the website and inputs into it yeah i think that's really where it comes like making sure that every like the whole team is present for some of the calls mm -hmm. and it, it's certainly like i always say like not everyone is going to make every decision like Sure. We do need to refine down some of who's making decisions about what, but um, you want, I, you know, I, I really think about this today. Like we want our teams to really have buy-in to the company as a whole. Like it creates better retention, um, which creates, you know, less money outgoing. Um, and, and having everyone's kind of role or um, having them understand that they can utilize some of the functionality on the website or we can create functionality on the mm -hmm. website to help them with with what they do that's really kind of like part of the initial intake and discovery process is like let's take a look at what everyone's doing what could potentially happen on the website what could happen through another piece of technology that's integrated with the site or integrated with a company overall we start to look for opportunities like that so that everyone can kind of start to see that there is probably something there for them to make their lives easier to reach whoever they need to reach better. And then the idea of, of really mapping out customer or, or you know, visitor journeys through your website. 
Um, so, I mean, because that's one of the other issues you often see is, you know, if you get to a website and you start on your journey and then, you know, you hit a dead end or you take oh, yeah. a left turn that you weren't expecting to take. Yeah, I think I always think back to um, my early days in websites when we would do an about page for our client and mm -hmm. they'd write about them and then it was like the end. Yeah. You know, there, there were no links, there, there was no call to action, there was, there was nothing to take people to the next step. Um, and I really started emphasizing with my clients over time, like, we can't have a dead end. We have to lead them somewhere. Like, you want them to do something. You don't just want them to read your blog post and keep your fingers crossed that they come back to you. Invite them to, to sign up for your newsletter list or a free offer or something. So it's really thinking about making points of connection and building the relationship along the way. And I find that sometimes even that shift of like, think about the sale and think more about the relationship because any relationship is going to lead to potentially a sale, but maybe like more sales in the future. Um, and when they start to think about it that way of like creating threads that create the relationship, mm -hmm. I find that helps them kind of start to think, okay, well, now that they've gone here, what does this experience need to be? Where do we want to, to, to guide them? And also, you know, what I, what I find is that we have to think even once a purchase is made or a sale happens or, you know, the contact form is, is completed, you're not done. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's still a follow-up. There's, there's still a confirmation message or an order confirmation or an email. And that, that also builds the relationship. Yeah. So, so really mapping all of those threads throughout can really um, just create some, some cohesive experience for people that like just draws them into your world more deeply. Yeah, and I like that idea of um, the threads, uh, like you said, because I do, there are all these threads and sometimes they just end up in a big kind of messy ball. Yes. So, but, um, but the idea of really understanding where people can go and where they need to go and what needs to be next. I mean, it takes a lot because I think, again, I think sometimes people think it's just slapping up a few pretty pictures and whatever, and it's rather than have a whole strategic plan and a map map behind it. Um, how have how have you seen um, websites evolve, and where do you think the next generation of websites going to go? The thing that I've been most excited about is how technology, like technology and websites, are working together. So we're looking more at, at you know, not just a website that's self-contained, but how it mm -hmm. integrates with other systems. And I see even more of that happening in the future. Is you know, like clients and companies really starting to think about the bigger picture of the technology that they're using and how it's all working together, as opposed to treating it like individual discrete systems. Like, oh, this is my website. And they fill out a contact form and that's all they do there. I mean, there is a much bigger picture um, that's possible. So that's, that's really, that's probably the most significant shift that I've seen and that I've really been excited about because it, kind of zooms out. It treats the website less like a discrete thing and more like mm -hmm. a um, part of the bigger picture of the company and how that's going to work in the world. I also think with everyone being online so much more, those kind of flows through the website into other kind of, you know, from the website, maybe into a Facebook group or into some other sort of like community area. It, it's becoming really interesting how um, how people are utilizing the technology that's out there to, to just kind of expand their presence overall and build more of like a brand and a personality even behind a larger brand. Yeah, and I think that you touched on something there that I think is very important is this idea of digital processes, because that is one of the things that have, has uh, been brought into sharp focus um, during the pandemic is the fact that a lot of businesses paid lip service to digital processes or parked them or just said, yeah, yeah, we'll get around to them. Uh, and now realizing that digital processes are critically important, particularly when you have a, a much more distributed world, um, even like employee based than ever before. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, to your point, I think uh, your websites uh, have to become part and central to those digital processes. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, you know, I've been watching how different businesses have adapted um, and how they've stepped up and how they've led. And I will say like those that are integrating technology in new ways or pivoting, like 
my gym never used to have online classes and now mm-hmm. does. And they're doing some really interesting things, both physically in their space and outside mm-hmm. their space, as well as online through, you know, social media and through email communication. And the owner of the gym, I just admire him so much because he stayed so on top of letting everyone know what's happening um, that, I, you know, just, it's just kind of like a great success story. Like I, I have no doubt that I will be a member of that gym for a very long time to come. And I think that's another uh, great point that you just, um, that you just uh, mentioned there is the idea of, I mean, you said they kept informed really on top of things. And I think that's where uh, sometimes websites get left behind a little bit, you know, maybe they have Mm -hmm. a new section or whatever, but they're not, they're not at the forefront of delivering up to the minute kind of information that people need. And it has much of it has shifted to social media. And, and so sometimes, I mean, I see some companies is totally out of sync. You go to their website, it's all kind of generic static content. If you want to find out something, you go to their Facebook, but then you find out the Facebook is different from what's on their Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just that whole disjointed approach. Yeah. And that's certainly been frustrating when like, for example, there's one restaurant near us and uh, I, I, they buried even in Facebook what they're doing. So it's like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, am I picking up? Am I sitting, mm. sitting outside? I just don't know. And it becomes frustrating to even, um, try to sort through everything that's out there because most of it's not up to date and what is up to date actually isn't like top of, of the page. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I mean, I, I think that's been kind of like absolutely critical in, in this day is, is really um, finding ways to really communicate with your audience, whether they're on your email list or not. Mm -hmm. So if there was one thing that you would advise everybody to consider about their website or to do to their website right now, what would it be? Simplest thing is make sure there's a clear call to action on your website. That I I will say probably half of the websites I look at, I'm like, I just don't know what you want me to do. Like, do you want me to contact you? you? Do you want me to go to your services page? Having a clear call to action really can accelerate so much interaction on your website. Yeah. And then sometimes you have the opposite problem where you have too many call to actions, right? Yes. Yeah. So I should say clear as in like one, <laughs> maybe two, not five. That becomes actually overwhelming for our, our brains um, yeah. and it becomes too many choices. And then we, I, I, it's like, which is right for me? I don't know. Let's, I, it's easier to watch TV than try to make this yeah. decision right now. It is. And I think people don't realize that sometimes about how overwhelmed we get when we're given choices. It's like if you put somebody in front of like three doors, they'll probably choose one to go to. If you put them in front of eight doors or 10 doors, they'll just stay where they are because it's just, yeah. you know, they won't pick any. And I think that's a really good point. And I do think, yes, that, that the call to action, because it is sometimes when you go to a website, you're like, I don't know what you want me to do. Why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> And I think the other thing is sometimes people, if people try to be too clever as well, it's like, if you're there, I mean, be honest and upfront about what you want the person to do, because at least then we can have an honest interaction, you know, me and your website can have an honest interaction if I know what it is you're looking for. And then I can decide whether I want to give you that or not. Exactly. I think, I think that, and just not being too clever about communicating Mm -hmm. what you do as well. Mm -hmm. I've, I've landed on websites and had to scroll and read to be like, I think this person might do this thing or might offer it, but I'm really struggling because there's like a quote at the top. And mm-hmm. you know, don't make people work to find out who you are and what you offer to this world. Yeah, it's exactly. We've had the issue for ages with sales. Like some people will, some companies will say, "Oh, we don't call our salespeople salespeople," and they come up with some title. And I'm always like, "But you know, the people they interact with." they know you're a salesperson. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what you call yourself. They know you're a salesperson. So just be proud of that rather than trying to hide it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this has been great, Brandy. Um, all of your Brandy's information, company information will be in the contributor bio. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. So my company, Alchemy and AIM, we do a website development and strategy, really looking at from a big picture perspective at our clients' and businesses. So we're helping them make the best decisions for them. I always say best decisions and best investments because I want to see them succeed in the future. And I want to be part of an ongoing relationship, you know, to help them with that success. 
Yeah, that's great. So everybody out there, don't, um, once upon a time, your website was everything. Now, maybe it's been relegated to somewhere over there because something else seems cooler or more top of mind. You know, get back, pay your website uh, some attention and work with somebody like Brandy to figure it out. Okay. Um, listen, this has been great. My name is John Golden, the Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.